Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, giver of life and health, your Son Jesus Christ has called us to hunger and thirst for justice for all. Refresh us with your grace, that we may not weary of following you, and by living your desire for all creation, restoring health and wholeness to all creation, that we may do this always for the sake of the one who meets our needs, Jesus Christ. Amen. Reading from Jeremiah The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Can I keep my way pure by guarding it according to your word? With my whole heart I seek you. Do not let me stray from your commands. I treasure your word in my heart so that I may not 
not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your laws. With my lips I declare all the laws of your Reading from Hebrews, Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of this reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. Having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation. For all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Stay with us, O Lord Jesus Christ. Night will soon fall. Then stay with us, O Lord Jesus Christ.
Just a few short months ago, we celebrated Christmas, the time when the Messiah was born. Then we thought about stars and mangers and shepherds and a little baby who came to bring peace on earth. During the Easter season, we focus on the man Jesus and what he gave up to save us all. Today, we will take a look at Jesus' last three years on earth, what he taught us and what he did. The story of Jesus' ministry begins not in a grand temple or crowded marketplace, but in the fishing town by the Sea of Galilee. While Jesus was walking along the shores of Lake Galilee, he saw two brothers. One was Simon, also named known as Peter, and the other was Andrew. They were fishers men, and they were casting the nets into the lake. Jesus said to them, Come and follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Right then, the two brothers dropped their nets and went with him. Jesus walked on until he saw James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were in a boat with their father, mending their nets. Jesus asked them to come with him to right away. They left the boat and their father and went with Jesus. Matthew 4, 20, 22. Later, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector named Levi, who was called Matthew, sitting at the place for paying taxes. Jesus said to him, Follow me. Levi left everything and went with Jesus. Luke 5, 27 and 28. In his home, Levi gave a big dinner for Jesus. Many tax collectors and our guests were also there. The Pharisees grumbled to Jesus. Why are you eating and drinking with those tax collectors and these other sinners? Healthy people don't need a doctor, but sick people do. I didn't come to invite good people to turn to God. I came to invite sinners. What is he talking about? I have no idea. Jesus was about 30 years old when he called his first disciples. He startling things to say about who he was and the disciples dared to believe in him. But Jesus had not yet performed any miracles until that is when Jesus attended a certain wedding reception. Jesus was at a wedding feast with his mother in the village of Cana in Galilee where his disciples had also been invited. When the bride and groom realized they had no more wine, the servant girl took their glasses and told the man in charge about it. When Mary, Jesus' mother, heard, that, heard this, she told Jesus he must do something, and then the, told the servant girl, to go get a jug of water. She told the servant girl to do whatever Jesus told her to do. Jesus told the servant girl to pour the water into an empty wine, and it became wine, a miracle.
Then the servant girl poured some for the bride and groom, and they were surprised because they didn't know where it came from. But the servant did. This was Jesus' first miracle, and he did it in the village of Cana in Galilee. There, Jesus sold his glory and his disciples put their faith in him. After that day, Jesus performed many signs and miracles, and word about his ministry spread like wildfire. Some were excited about this great healer and teacher. Some were nervous about what his words might mean. Some found joy and peace in his touch. Others grew anxious and let pride get in their way. Many of the stories of Jesus' ministry of miracles and healing went something like this. Many people followed and kept crowding around. In the crowd was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. She had gone to many doctors, and they had not done anything except cause her a lot of pain. She had paid them all the money she had, but instead of getting better, she got worse. The woman had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him in the crowd and barely touched his clothes. She, she said to herself, If I can just touch his clothes, I will get well. As soon as she touched them, her bleeding stopped, and she knew she was well. At that moment, Jesus felt power go out of him. He turned to the crowd and asked, Who touched me? His disciples said to him, Look at all these people crowding around you. How can you ask who touched you? But Jesus turned to see who had touched him. The woman knew what had happened to her. She came shaking with fear and knelt down in front of Jesus. Then she told him the whole story. Jesus said to the woman, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. One day, Jesus was sitting at the temple near the offering box and watching people put in their gifts. He noticed that many rich people were giving a lot of money jingling their money bags and strutting and smiling, making sure everyone can see how much money they put in. Finally, a poor widow came up and put two coins that were worth only a few pennies. She was embarrassed because everybody else was giving so much money, but all she had was two coins. Then she walked off and joined the crowd of people. Jesus told his disciples to gather around. He said, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. Everyone else gave what they didn't need, but she is very poor and gave everything that she had. As Jesus' ministry continued, it wasn't long that thousands of people began following him every day in hopes that they might receive a touch of his grace. They would wait for him on the hillside and hope to be able to get a glimpse of him. One day, he crossed Lake Galilee to some place where he could be alone, but the crowd was waiting for him. In the evening, after being there all day, the disciples came to him and said, You should tell the crowd to leave so that they can go home and eat. And Jesus said, We will feed them. But the disciples said, We only have three tiny fish and two pieces of bread. So Jesus took the bread and the fish, and he looked up towards heaven and blessed the food and handed it to the disciples. They gave it to the people. There were so many people who ate until they were all full. And they ate and they ate and they ate. After everyone had eaten, all they wanted Jesus told the disciples to pick up all the leftovers. They brought to him many large baskets of food and showed him that all the food had multiplied.
When we offer to Jesus what we have, His love transforms it into all that we could ever need. At that time, the chief priests and the nation's leaders were meeting at the home of the high priest. They planned how they could sneak around and have Jesus arrested and put to death. Judas was one of the twelve disciples. He went to the chief priests and asked, How much will you give me if I help arrest Jesus? They paid Judas thirty silver coins, and from then on he started looking for a good chance to betray Jesus. When Jesus was eating the Passover meal with his disciples, Jesus said, One of you will surely hand me over to my enemies. The disciples were all very sad, and each one said to Jesus, Lord, you can't mean me. He answered, One of you men who has eaten with me tonight will betray me, as is foretold in the scriptures. But it will be terrible for the one who betrays me. It would have been better if that man had simply never been born. Judas said, Teacher, you can't mean me. That's what you say. But later, Judas did betray him. During the meal, Jesus took some bread in his hands, blessed it, and broke it, and said, Take this, all of you, for this is my body. Then he, he picked up the glass of wine, and blessed it. And he said, Take this and drink it. This is my blood, and with it God made an agreement that with you will be poured out, so that all your sins will be forgiven. From now on, I'm not going to drink any wine until I can drink new wine with you in, in the kingdom. In our Lenten production this year, the children began by presenting how Jesus chose his disciples. Then they highlighted some of his important teachings and showed a few of the many miracles he performed. Besides his first miracle of changing water into wine, Jesus continued to move among the people for three years, performing many, many more miracles. He calmed the storm at sea, walked on water. There was also a miraculous catch of fish. More and more people began to follow him as he cured the lepers, healed the sick, and helped the cripple walk again. He gave sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, and voice to the mute. He even raised Lazarus from the dead. Jesus continued to perform miracles, and everywhere he went, the crowds who followed became bigger and bigger, which led up to Palm Sunday. At the end of our production, you saw two videos where we learned about Judah's betrayal of Jesus and the reenactment of the Last Supper. Holy Week is coming when we remember these particular events. Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem, the Last Supper, Mary who anointing him with nard, which prompted Jesus to remind people that we are to love one another, the prayer vigil in the Garden of Gethsemane, the tragic crucifixion, and finally Easter. The resurrection, which is God's response to the human effort to kill God's love, God's love prevails. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world. Let us be at peace within ourselves. Let us rejoice that we are profoundly loved and need never be afraid. Let us be aware of the source of being that is common to us all and to all living creatures. Realizing that we are all in nourished from the same source of life, may we live in a way that does not deprive others of air, food, water, shelter, or the chance to live. Leader, let us pray that we ourselves cease to be a cause of suffering to one another. With humility, let us pray for the establishment of peace in our hearts and on earth. I ask for your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, priests, and deacons, and all those who have been baptized for this gathering and for everyone who engages the world with God's love 
or who else in the church shall we pray? I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. For what part of the earth shall we pray? your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Whose suffering do we present before God? I ask your prayers for all who seek God or deeper knowledge of God. Who joins us on the spiritual journey? I ask your prayers for the departed. Who has died? that we may ask God's blessing. We offer thanks to God. What are the blessings in our lives? Lord be with you and also with you let us pray in union O God with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving we remember your death Lord Christ we proclaim your resurrection we await your coming in glory since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. 
Amen. أبانا in heaven hallowed be your holy name your kingdom come your will be done in all the earth as in heaven your kingdom come your will be done in all the earth as in heaven and give to us give us this day our daily bread O Lord we pray Forgive our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us and save us in time of trial. Deliver us from evil. Yours is the kingdom, yours the power, yours is the glory, now and ever, Abana, in heaven, Live without fear. Your Creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessing be with you always. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Jesus invites us to a way of celebration, meeting and feasting with the humble and the poor. Let us walk His way with joy. Jesus beckons us to a way of risk, letting go of our security. Let us walk his way with the joy. Jesus challenges us to listen to the voices of those who have nothing to lose. Let us walk his way with the joy. Jesus calls us to follow the way of the cross, where despair is transformed by the promise of new life. Let us walk his way with the joy. Thanks be to God.